I'm back. Yeah, time for some reviews. In 2015, here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, hey, hey. Maria, where's my pants? All right, my little TCLs, Scorpion 72, and we're going to be reviewing the 112th Collective Scale Batman The Dark Knight Returns. So it's basically a doll with real cloth clothing on them, but it's also very neat and very cool, and I think they actually pulled it off, and this is what most people call a game changer. So, we have the package here, as you can see, uh, it has the silhouette of Batman jumping in front of the lightning, just like the cover of the comic book back in, uh, I believe this comic book was 1984, if I'm not mistaken. Um, those of you who have read it, it uh, should be still available in trade paperback. Uh, if not, the um, DC uh, animation that came up with the adaptation of that book, which is basically um, cover, uh, I should say, panel to panel interpretation of it, but it's just in it's it's in live action, which is really really great, and I do recommend the, the graphic novel. And I also recommend the animated series. If you get on Blu-ray, you get the whole get the whole um, the whole cartoon of it, like the whole story, because they did split it up in two DVDs when it first came out. But if you get a Blu-ray, you get the whole complete um, whole complete story on one disc. I believe it, the the Blu-ray actually comes with a DVD disc with the whole complete. Um, story and the uh, animation because it is basically two hours and a half long so yeah it's it's the long one but it's well worth it for any batman fan or anybody who's interested in uh that all right so enough about that little background information there which some of you may know or may not already know if you don't know now you know and check it out so this is a previews exclusive so I plan to get the other one as well. It should be on its way. There's some delays in certain parts. There's three of them apparently. There's one from Mecca's website itself, and there's one from Previews, which is uh, from Diamond uh, Distributors, and then there's the regular one that is available pretty much all uh, online retailers and um, any comic book shop that's ordered, and also through Diamond. So basically, you have this lovely silhouette here. You can just remove it like that, and you still have the silhouette of Batman. Um, before that, uh, I should actually show you this part here. So on the back, you actually have a little bit of detail of what's happened, um, what the figure is about, and stuff, and how it looks, and different poses. So he's basically in a cloth uniform, which is something completely different. Um, here to just show you different poses he's done like he has a leaping flying pose like he come up from the sky and dropping from the sky regular stance pose aiming pose with his rifle he comes with different fists and hands and she you can see there the batarangs there um there's a fist with batarangs in them already uh inside the fist a grappling hook different change of head um he comes with a leg belt and of course he comes with a sniper rifle so as I was just just basically showing you, it's just, it comes out like that, and you still have that there like this. Then you have the actual casing with just the lightning on it. Silhouette of Batman here in front of the building, well behind the building, just let the bat signal shine on the building. For those of you who are read the comic or even saw the cartoon, you understand uh, where that picture is from. And then we open it up. A little silver film and voila it says Batman the Dark Knight Returns and on this side here you have the actual figure which is just beautiful the way they case it in you can see all the extra hands the belt the rifle 
his grappling hook, his extra head, and comes with a stand in the background. So, we're going to open up this uh, bad boy up and see what he's all about. Um, just uh, uh, another note too, is that the previous exclusive is based, for any of those who've read the comic or seen the cartoon, it's based on his costume when he first comes out of retirement. And that is the costume that he did with their, pre with their exclusive one. Um, before he goes into the one where he just has, he doesn't have the yellow overall around his uh, chest. He just has a, the, the, the bat, the symbol of the bat there, the black um, uh, embryo. Embryo. <laughs> Alright then. So let's take a look inside and see what he's all about. So upon taking him out from the tray, you'll notice that on the back he is double trayed. So from what I understand, from what I read beforehand, is that this is supposed to be used to hold up his cape when he's in like a, a gliding pose or coming down from a rooftop, which I heard works so-so. Uh, depends on how you pose it. Um, and here you have the stand which connects to the base. This is actually the, the stand that will grip around the figure to have in whatever pose you have. So the tray is actually a double tray. So, look at that, you see, you can see everything very clearly here, um, and oh, wow, I didn't even know about this, this apparently is a, a bag to keep your extra stuff, which is pretty neat, I don't think anybody's ever done this before with some of the other figures that you do get, with all those extra hands and accessories, I don't think we've ever gotten, like, uh, a, a bag to hold the extra stuff in. And you can even write down what's in there or what the name of the figure is in here. Um, they are going a long way with this. Um, they, they do have a lineup. Uh, I saw the Mutant Hunter or the Toy Fair. And they also have like a Judge Dread on its way. And they're trying to find a way to get the bike in there. Which uh, will have light up sounds and uh, other things they're trying to work into there. So they have big plans for all their like uh, license that they're acquired and to make them in this style with real actual cloth clothing and capes and suits all right so on to the figure so um right off the bat i, I know i can say that a lot <laughs> um yeah this figure is really collector friendly um, very easy to come on the package uh, and here he is I notice my cape is a little bent here at the side but now that I look at it I can see because it's a little bit of like a um, I guess this feels like a different type of material almost like plasticky type of material at the end here at both ends so I think that might be for when you're going to pose him using the wire that he comes with to make it hook up here because he has one there and he has others here in the back so I'm guessing the wire will go into these parts and clip onto these parts and give that that spread like he's coming down and um, on an enemy or something like that or just guiding through the sky uh, I do notice there's a little bit of paint so well, not paint so much but this paint removal on the top here of his ear so I can kind of see like this, this flesh tone so it's like uh, but it, it's very minor so he comes to the Batman base his articulation is goes as follows, ball jointed neck. He has a lot of articulation that I have even yet to really discover. Um, his arms go up. He has swivel at the biceps. He has uh, double bedded knees. He has swivel at the gauntlets, swivel at the wrists. He has um, uh, pivot at the wrist also. He has swivel at the waist. Um, ab crunch uh, what else does he have here he has he's able to do the splits basically so he has a leg articulation and a ball joint he has swivel at the upper thigh double jointed knees it feels like uh, that's the thing it's kind of hard to tell what um, articulation he does have in here but there is a diagram that I'm going to try to find um, of all the articulation that's on this figure so you can actually see uh, he has swivel at not the upper boot but he does have ankle articulation and he has ankle rockers and again there you go 
And what I like, it has this nice little click to it, so it really locks and it's really in tight. So that's why I really like about that is that you can hold the pose as not loose. Uh, for those of you wondering how the suit goes on, basically that's how it goes on. Like, um, not how it goes on, but how they did it is basically they sold it here completely in the back. So he has this one stream in the back for his costume. So, um, and he has another one underneath the arms as well. So you can get a good shot there of that underneath the arms. So basically, and the side of the leg, so what they did is they took an articulated figure, completely put a form-fitting costume on him, like if it was uh, an actual like a 12-inch figure there, a 1-6 scale figure, and made it cloth. So that intel, uh, uh, that info, um, you might want to be careful. That's one of my things I was wondering. You might want to be careful. Me, I have like saber tooth claw nails sometimes, so I'm afraid that I don't want to pick any of the material. So far, it feels very smooth, but you wanna might avoid that for uh, the female collectors. Um, watch your nails with this, cause you don't want to pick the material and pull the stream or uh, you know or any of the um, the sewing or threading, because it might actually ruin the whole costume thing. And that's pretty much my only worry about this figure is that. And of course, if it gets a little dirty, say you drop it somewhere, I guess you just have to use a normal cleaner to clean it off and stuff like that. Um, you can get a good sitting pose. So if you want to sit them in a chair, if you make your own custom made Batmobile or Batcave, you can sit there in that. Uh, Alright, so what we're going to do is that the case in here is very easy. So I'm just going to show you how. There's no twist ties or nothing with this figure, no the elastic. Basically, all the stuff is really well like in, uh, enclosed here, but it's very easy to take out, and you don't have to worry about cutting anything and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is just pop his head off, simple ball joint, and then we're going to put the other head on. So the sculpting on the face is really well done. Um, I do find his uh, skin tone a little, little light. I find it kind of almost too light, almost zombie-ish kind of light, but <laughs> that's my only thing about the face sculpt, but it does look like the Dark Knight from the comic book. So, that's one way to switch him, so you can have him with the, you know, he has his grimacing teeth, he's like, mad or angry, and then of course you have him with his just stern look. So I'm going to give a little more uh, close up of the actual hands when I'm changing them. Um, as for the leg belt, there is a strap button here for that. So you just open it up like this. And I guess it doesn't really matter which leg you put it on, it's up to you. So you can just strap it on this leg and it goes in quite well. And um, Let's see, whoops, I kind of missed the hole there. There we go. There you go. There you have his leg belt. Now I know the other one with um, the black and gray. He comes with a separate boot with a gun in there and stuff, which uh, I'm quite interesting to see how that works. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that soon. Um, the head, the extra head, can actually fit back in the same spot, just like that. So everything's really neat. But then again, they did give you a, a bag to put all your extra accessories if you want. I'm going to take out the rifle right here. He has a grappling hook, and yes, there is a string attached to it, so you can actually use it like to him to hold it in his hand and all that. So we're going to go right to the hands right now, and I'm going to show you how to change his hands and what they look like. All right, to change his hands seems to be quite easy as well. Let's just change his head. You just pop out the peg here, and then you just put in this peg on this side. And it goes right in. And there you go. Voila. And there he is with the batarangs in his hand. So I will note that um, his shoulders are like on a ball, but uh, a double ball joint type thing. So he gets a lot of like um, upper shoulder movement. But it is kind of limited due to the fabric uh, costume that he's wearing. So you do have a limit to how far back you can bend it and stuff. But it's still really great. And now in the pose that you can actually get this figure into uh, seeing how it is cloth 
And at first, I know a lot of people like me are going to be very wary and careful when I'm moving this figure around. Um, he he does have a, a, a kind of a high price point, but so far, it, you can see where all the money went and it's really well worth it. So let's take a look at his grappling hood, uh, hook and his gun. You can see you can get that perfect, perfect pose with his gun due to his articulation. Um, of course, you know, it's actually not, uh, yeah, actually not a real sniper gun. It actually had like a grappling hook attached to it uh, in the animated series and also in the comic book. But it's still very, very cool. Which brings me to a point too. Maybe that's why if those of you have seen the Batman vs Superman trailer where he's standing on the rooftop. It, it now makes sense as to why he had a gun on top of the rooftop. It could be the same type of gun with a grappling hook attached to it from to get to another building. So that's, that's just a thought. Uh, it could actually be a real actually uh, actual sniper gun. Which, which would be weird because we know Batman doesn't really use guns. Um, even though he did in this uh, <laughs> The Dark Knight Returns, but for certain uh, purposes, but yeah. Then he has his grappling hook, which he, the string is decent in uh, the length they give you. Um, the claws actually do not then uh, close in to uh, grip onto something, but you know, you just have to wrap it around um, uh, any type of uh, object that you wish to, uh, if you wish to hang Batman from, and pretend like he's swinging. Um, this was actually used, with like a, if I mentioned um, in the animated series, in the graphic novel, when he first returns, especially it's more prominent in the, gra if you watch the animated series, you're going to see a lot of these objects that they use that they've given you in the sh in the actual cartoon which I think is where they took the idea for having different sets based on certain scenes and this is one of the beginning scenes there in the warehouse where he actually uses this grappling hook to climb up with the rope so I think it's pretty pretty cool and it looks like um, Mesco did their homework with this big time so in order to use this stand with the base what you have to do is use the back of this to either think of the back of front here you pop it out like that so you push it through here which pops out this peg so then after you now can put this part in there and there you have your stand and then you can put the dark knight the belt actually moves around and I'm looking to see now that I yep yeah, Little tidbit too, the belt is removable. Hey, look at that. Like, I'm discovering all kinds of things with this figure. Uh, sometimes I do take a look at the figure before I do a review, but I want to discover this on hand at the same time with my viewers. So, I'm just as excited. <laughs> so, now you have Batman on the stand. And you can have him up in, the, in this way. Um, just get him in the right pose. Now, we're going to try that other thing that he came with, which is the um, wiry kind of like cape dispenser. <laughs> Not dispenser, I shouldn't call it, but the cape shaper. We'll call it the cape shaper. So, there's a little white part here that um, can clip onto the base. And as I mentioned before, they have uh, these little, like, the, some of the fabric is a little bit more uh, slicker than the other parts. So right there, you have that part there. And I'm not sure how to get this part in. So we're going to see how this works. Okay, I get it now. So I think what happens is that you have to clip it onto the figure itself and then uh, get it into the pose. So, I've heard about this being one of the most difficult parts about this figure that not too many people like, and I can kind of see why. So, if you want to get that. He's in flight mode pose. 
you have to slide that part. See, I don't want to ruin the cape either. That is the problem with this thing that I'm now understanding what people were talking about. Some people who got this, uh, had this a uh, few uh, weeks before me. I've checked what they post online and apparently it... So this is how I got one of them so far. So this one the poses I match to get them into. Um, it's a little difficult but once you get the understanding basically these little clip parts here it's supposed to go on the parts I mentioned earlier about the, the, the ridges area which seem to be the points and all the capes have the same ridge area where you can clip it onto and then you can pose it and try to make it that you can hire, um, not hire, the, hide the wire. Um, I find this side is a lot more sturdy and flexible than this side for some reason it keeps drooping down but if I put the clip, I'll turn this around, if I put the clip more say at the end here I can get a better pose or maybe a better uplift of the cape um, this is basically how it looks in the back I guess I have to twist the Batman and stuff around to adjust it but that's how it clips on right onto the stand it's it's cool it's hidden um, you just have to figure out a way how to make it even more hidden so you don't actually see like maybe the blue parts but the blue parts kind of blended, blended to the cape so it's okay but it's more or less trying to uh, cover the wire, which seems to, is going to be the big challenge here. But it's something that you will definitely have to play around with. I do find the stand is a little, depending on how you get the stand and what pose, because it seems to, it's not as sturdy as it should be. So it tends to just tilt and fall over, as you just saw when I was trying to adjust it, just to show you different positions. Um, I hope the other ones don't have this blue little uh, tip part because the other costume is of course is the black and gray so I'm hoping that this part is uh, black so it actually blends it if not you can have these blue tips showing off of the end of the, the black cape in the regular series of this figure. Alright so I'm going to show you a little comparison socks with the um, previous exclusive Dark Knight Returns figure. Here we have them next to, let's take them off the stand so we can get a fair, here we have them next to Batman from DC Universe Classics from Mattel. Again, he's a little bit past the 6 inch mark uh, with these figures here. Um, let's show you him with Superman, which he seems to be almost pretty much right on par. A little bit taller again. Um, next, the Dark Knight Returns from uh, Mattel there when they did their Batman um, Unlimited series. So you get an idea, basically the same two type of figures based off the same, well two figures based off the same story and you can see the height comparison of the two figures. So he is a little bit taller so he's probably about a 6.25 uh, or something like that rather than the regular just flat out 6 inches and last but not least we're going to compare him with a DC collectibles figure which he seems to be pretty on par give or take a few inches he's almost the same size as the DC collectible um, action figure So he's basically in between the, the range of uh, the 6 inch and the 6.75, uh, uh, I think it's 6.75 that these collectibles is working with, um, for now, <laughs> until they do their Icon series, which comes out later. I know I keep saying the Icon series, I'm really excited for that series, in case those of you who can watch my videos keep hearing me talk about it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait, it's like... It's like the Marvel Legends for DC fans, so they all understand that. Alright. And there you have it. A little comparison with the action figure. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, look at Mezco's 112 action figure, uh, which is actually six inch action figure. Um, so, in closing, uh, overall, 
it's a great figure great attempt by Mezco they're doing something different they're definitely trying something new and it's really really it's I think it's really gonna work for them I have a few little kinks here and there that might have to work out mainly the that wiry stand thing there for those with caves but it'd be interesting to see how the dude judge dread seeing how he's gonna have a little bit more armor and I believe they're at, he's gonna be like in a leather type suit so I wonder how that's gonna work with um, his articulation but as I mentioned before my only thing here is that see there's a little pull in here a bit is that with the cloth clothing I guess if, if any I guess it goes with any figure that has cloth clothing like a uh, um, sideshow collectible figures or a hot toys thing you just gotta be careful not to pull the fabric because there's really no way to change this it's really sewn and really sewn firmly in onto the figure's butt um, uh, great articulation uh, great sculpting a lot of accessories um, you do get your money's worth for this figure um, the other thing that would have been cool based on the, uh, on the anime thing if you had like a, a, a removable sticker here and there that you could put on where you know he, he shows his uh, body armor underneath um, those who watch the animated uh, series or even know a cartoon know what I'm talking about but yeah he, when he got hit there he had like we showed the body on armor underneath um, like I said, these things are sharp. Watch out for the batarangs. I poked myself just trying to put this back on and take it off. So, um, don't worry, no blood. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't wait to get the other ones. I definitely go track down. I don't know. I think I'm just going to begin the, um, the black and gray ones soon. Definitely getting Judge Dread. I think there's another company that's doing Judge Death, but I'm not sure if uh, Mezco's also going to do Judge Death. So it seems like there's other people jumping on this bandwagon of doing six inch figures with real cloth uh, uniforms and clothing. So you might see abundance of this now because now it seems that Mecca has found a way. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I keep saying Mecca. Nesco has found a way to make this work and it works very well. Uh, and as I said before, I can't wait to see what else they have in store, what else they have down the pipeline. Um, San Diego Comic Con would definitely show off a lot of what they're going to be coming out with in the next, like, uh, rest of 2015 into 2016. I'm really anxious to see what they actually add to the bike uh, for uh, Judge Dredd and uh, any other figures they have coming down the line. So um, this is a figure up your alley, you like the Dark Knight, you like Batman, uh, you just want a different figure in your collection. He is really different to the other figures and stuff like that. Um, then I do recommend that uh, you get this figure, pick him up. Um, great figure to have. So Scorpion 72 for another review of Batman, the Dark Knight Returns action figure from Let's go. Like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, keep playing. Oh, one more thing. It's really cool and really great to get a 6 Batman that has a cape that you can pretty much wrap around himself. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a long time coming. And like, Mezco, you did a great job. Great job. Keep it up. Can't see. Can't wait to see what else you guys come up with. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier too. By the way, his does have boot articulation. He uh, like where he could swirl out the boot because uh, and it can actually come off because the black and gray one actually does have a extra boot with a holster there, which I'll be doing in a review of uh, once I get them. So great job, uh, Mezco. Keep it up. Can't wait to see what else you guys have in store for us. Till next time. Batman out.